Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, and this is Ask the Pastor. Today's Ask the Pastor episode deals with a very important topic that many of us struggle with, and that is the relationship between truth and love in the life of a believer. Here's a question we have. Truth and love. If you have to choose, which one? Why? Well, this is something that surely all of us have faced and wrestled with at one time or another. Should I speak the truth or should I show love? Which one should I do? Which one should I choose? If I can walk in truth or I can walk in love, if I can demonstrate the truth or I can demonstrate love, which one? Well, the short answer to that question is both. You must, we must always choose both. And I know that's not easy, that's not the easy answer, but it is the true answer because both of these belong to the attributes of God. We talked about the attributes of God last time and both truth and love are central to the attributes of God. And remember, God's attributes are eternal, infinite, and unchangeable. So God's truth, God is truth, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is the truth, infinitely, eternally, and unchangeably the truth. And God is love, 1 John 4, 8 and 16 tells us. Again, infinitely, eternally, and unchangeably. Love belongs to the goodness of God. And God's goodness, God's love, never changes, never fades, never is diminished. The other thing about God's attributes that we didn't talk about last time is that God's attributes are inseparable because God is all of his attributes. You can't pick and choose. God's not an all-you-can-eat buffet or a salad bar where you say, I'd like some truth, but I don't want love, or I'd take a side of love and I'll skip the truth. God is who he is. And ultimately, we love God and we want to be like Christ, and Christ is truth and love. God is truth and love. In fact, the Bible clearly calls us to both speak the truth in love and also to love in truth. So the Bible takes these things and unites them together. Ephesians 4.15, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. So again, it's truth in love. And then 2 John opens with this wonderful passage, the elder to the elect lady and her children whom I love in truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son in truth and love. So we take these verses together. We are to speak the truth in love, and we are to love in truth. And it turns out that if we try to do one without the other, we really aren't doing either. If you're trying to speak the truth, but you're not doing so in love, then you're not reflecting the character of God in your speech, and your speech can't even be said to be true, because true means conforming to the standard And the standard in this case is the character of God, and God is love. So you cannot speak the truth, really, without speaking the truth in love, because it's only lovingly spoken truth that is true, as in faithful to God's character. And also you cannot love without loving in truth, because loving in truth is what is again in keeping with the character of God. God's love is a true love, and God's truth is a loving truth. Again, his attributes are inseparable. The problem is we live in a culture that likes to define love as telling people what they want to hear, agreeing with them, affirming everything that someone believes and does. But this isn't what God does. God tells us what we need to know not what we want to hear. God loves us too much to lie to us and not tell us the truth. So we are to love as God loves. But when God tells us the truth, it is in love. It is out of a love for us as his own. Well, this can be tricky, can it? 
because we have different relationships with different people and not everybody understands or agrees with or grasps the truth and there's a key distinction between those who are in the church and who belong to Christ and those who are not in Christ and who don't believe the truth. So is there a different approach that we take to the different people in our lives and the different relationship that those people have to Christ? Well, in a word, yes. And 1 Corinthians gives us some guidance here. I'm going to start preaching through 1 Corinthians in January, and I'm looking forward to digging into this book together as a church. But 1 Corinthians 5, Paul writes something as a clarification to an earlier letter. He says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world, or the greedy, or swindlers, or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of a brother, if he is guilty of sexual immorality, or greed, or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside." What does this mean? There's a lot of language about judgment and moral categories here, but what Paul is saying is pretty clear, and that is we are to live in the world, and we are to have relationships with people in the world, and as we live in the world and have relationships with people in the world, we are not to judge those people. We are not to say, oh, you're sexually immoral, or oh, you're an idol worshiper, or oh, you're greedy, because that's not our job, right? That's not, that's not on us. That's God's department, not ours. We are to love them. And we are to speak the truth. What truth? The truth about Christ. Later in 1 Corinthians 9, Paul clarifies how he interacts with, with unbelievers in particular. He says in 1 Corinthians 9, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews, to those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not myself being under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share with them in its blessings. So here Paul says, not that he changes who he is, but that he identifies with all groups of people because he has things in common with them, right? So he identifies with people and he's willing to meet them where they are. That's kind of to put it in modern language. He's willing to meet people where they are so that he can have an opportunity to share the gospel with them. So this is to be our disposition toward outsiders, toward unbelievers, towards those, those in the world. It's not one of moral condemnation. We're not to be speaking the truth of, of what awful sinners they are and, and how God's going to judge them, but rather we're to tell them about Christ. We're to tell them about his love. We're to tell them about the salvation that is in Christ. And we are to demonstrate love to them. But within the household of faith within the church, we are to build one another up in the truth. And so there's a little bit more straight talk that's sometimes called for brother to brother or brother to sister or sister to sister, right? Within the family of God, we speak a little bit more straight with each other about the things that we know God has called us to. So we're to speak the truth in love and we're to love one another in truth. And we're to do so in a different way with those who are outside the church and outside the faith versus those who are inside the church and inside the faith. Boy, when I think about all this, <laughs> calls for wisdom, doesn't it? We need wisdom, discernment to know what to do. Well, thankfully, God's given us a promise in James 1.5 that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. And that's good news because... We are called to hold on to both truth and love, to love in truth 
and to speak the truth in love, to do so in a way that's appropriate to where that person stands with Christ and also the relationship that we have to them. And that, that definitely calls for wisdom. So we should always be praying for wisdom in all of our relationships as we speak the truth in love and as we love in truth. Well, this has been Ask the Pastor. I hope it's been helpful to you. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church.